Hey, what's up, bye guys? It's Al here, playing some more Scrap Mechanic. Today we're going to be looking at a creation that's been in the making for quite some time. A lot of it's been prototypes and stuff up until this stage, but it's finally ready and it's finally complete. Today we're going to be looking at a gear car. This is... I'm not sure if it's a four-wheel drive, technically, or an R-wheel drive. I was talking with Alstrak when I was making it, and there's a lot of things in this that resemble a four-wheel drive car and a lot of things that resemble an all-wheel drive car, and honestly, we didn't know which one it should be. So if you guys want to tell me which one you think it is, an all-wheel drive or a four-wheel drive car, let me know in the comments down below. But this does not have a number, and it's simply referred to as the monstrous all-wheel drive. That's what it's named at the moment, even though I'm not 100% sure it is an all-wheel drive. The reason it's on a lift is because this does run at 9 frames, so when I do do the driving portion of this video, I will have to time lapse it quite a bit for it to look decent. Now looking at it, there is the engine in it is the Maxi engine. This is a 10 cylinder boxer engine and is currently the biggest and most well made engine I have currently. It's kind of the prime of all the engines I've made and it is needed to run the four wheel drive that is in it. I'm going to keep calling it four wheel drive or all wheel drive just know that I'm not sure which one it is. Anyway, this comes from the recent transmission design I made. This is what allows the engine to reverse and the old train or the new transmission as well, which gives it a first and second gear. Honestly, the second gear isn't that helpful and I mostly stick to using first, but there is a second gear if you want it. And because of the way this reverse is set up, you can choose first and second gear in both forward and reverse. So technically I think there's four gears in total. Once the power comes from the 10 cylinder engine, you can choose forward or reverse, choose one of the two gears, and then it's sent to these joints here and here, which go to the drive shaft. Each, the front and the back have suspension on them. And then at the back, it is my normal differential which I actually don't use differential, I use a single straight axle, I don't have differentials in mine. A lot of people use them, but if I use it in this, we wouldn't be able to play it. I couldn't run this, there's no way I could run this. It's already at nine frames, yeah. But for the forward front axle, in order to get the wheels to turn, you have your pivot there for turning, and then you have another joint here which allows the power to come from the axle to the wheel, and this little clip here is what actually causes the wheel to turn. There is no joint there, actually. The wheel is directly into that axle. And that pretty much covers it. I couldn't use springs because of the physics were bugging out, so I did use pistons. That was an Alstrak suggestion there. And it is fully functional. It's not the best off-road, and it's simply because of the ride height on it. I could, I guess, increase the length of the pistons there that might help but the ride height isn't the best it is really good at climbing hills really good with terrain however it isn't really good with hills and rocks and things like that because it doesn't have the best ride height I guess I could try turning the pistons up at some point to see if that helps however this isn't meant to be used it really isn't at night in frames it's more of to see if I could do it it's not really to see if it works it's not really even to see if it is useful I know it's not useful you're not gonna be able to use this but going over it that's pretty much all there is to this engine the maxi engine no it's not the maxi it's the maxim maxim engine 10 cylinder boxer four reverse mechanism new gearbox and then you have power going to the rear and front axle as well as all the things you need to allow your front to steer and that's really it. Yes, this was this actually didn't take me as long as I expected to build it because I had already experimented with the rear and front axles and how to get those working. The new transmission allowed me to get the power from lower down, which is what I needed to get this working. And everything was building up to this point. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to fade away, go to a time lapse where I'm actually driving this thing because I know you don't want to watch this at nine frames. So without any further ado, I'm actually going to end out the episode for those who want to watch it drive, 
If you did enjoy the episode, please leave a like. If you have any suggestions for future episodes, please leave them in the comments down below. If you enjoy the channel, enjoy what I'm doing, please subscribe. It helps a lot. And if you have any input on whether this is technically a four-wheel drive or all-wheel drive, please let me know in the comments below as well. Me and Elstrak are waiting what you think it is. So until next time, this has been Al, finally making a four-wheel drive and or all-wheel drive gear car. Peace.